there comes a time in your walk with the Lord where you begin to differentiate between Jesus and how much you love him and his spirit and how much you love that you know, or him <laughs> for some people it's more that than him <laughs> and how you love God the Father but there's always something more that Jesus wanted us to experience something intimate and deep something real and very personal that you can have that no other person can have except you and your Father which is in heaven and that's what Jesus prayed for his disciples to have that they would be one with the Father even as Jesus was one because we all worship Jesus and you know there's a lot of joy especially among Gentiles you know <laughs> I hate to say it but it's true among Gentiles you know it says that the Gentiles would trust in his name and believe me you know you can tell a Gentile you know from a Jew because the Jew kind of goes ah, there's God you know and there's Jesus and there's Spirit you know, and they kind of you know, they, they deal with it but a Gentile will go oh Jesus you know and it's like wow you know and all wired out but then you kind of talk about God the Father and it's kind of like, yeah you know Father you know kind of where a Jew kind of goes Father you know <laughs> so maybe there's a little difference there who knows God knows I don't but your intimacy that God desires is one to appreciate completely not just his spirit and not just his son but to appreciate our father and that's what the love of God is really it's not just appreciation but it's a understanding of knowing him in an intimate personal way take some time to begin to maybe if you don't understand what I'm saying to study that you know on your own you know just you could pick up a book about it you know in some place I'm sure you'll find a book titled God the Father <laughs> and begin to look at the fatherhood of God but more than that begin to look at the father as your daddy as your father as you becoming childlike and him becoming fatherly like so that you could have intimacy as opposed to holiness you know which is good you know there's there's a place and a time for holiness but a lot of times we sing some old songs and worship from a distance but that intimate conversation just really isn't with our father and that's what Tozer is talking about today in the devotional but that's also something that God really wants to talk to you about he wants you to know him he wants you to come into the holy place but to discover that that holiness is a tenderness that when you're in the presence of God it's not about the awe it's about the purity the purity of love the purity of tenderness the purity of the meekness the kindness the gentleness because you can't enter in with violence you can't enter in with anger you can't enter in with all these hostile type of emotions but you have to enter into peace in order to be in the holy place where God is so when you get to know how pure this love of God is how pure God's love is then you feel so transformed you feel changed in a way that you never imagined before where suddenly it's a lot easier to accept people misunderstanding you or people not comprehending where you're coming from or where you're going it's a lot easier to deal with life when you know that your father your father is God wow doesn't that give you goosebumps <laughs> doesn't that give you a thrill doesn't that kind of like send your heartbeat racing to a place that you never imagined you would find yourself to be? 
Learn to love God for himself alone. We love him because he first loved us. 1 John 4.19 The phrase, the love of God, when used by Christians, almost always refers to God's love for us. We must remember that it can also mean our love for God, meaning our Father. The first and great commandment is that we should love God with all the power of our total personality. Though all love originates in God, and that is for that reason God's own love, yet we are permitted to catch and reflect back that love in such a manner that it becomes our love included with our personality attached. The Christian's love for God has by some religious thinkers been divided into two kinds the love of gratitude, and the love of excellence. But we must carry our love to God further than the love of gratitude or the love of excellence. There is a place in the religious experience where we love God for himself alone. We love him because of who he is. There is, in the higher type of love, a super a supra-rational element that cannot and does not attempt to give reasons for its existence. It only whispers, I love, I love you. In the perfection of love, the heart does not reason from admiration to affection, but quickly rises to the height of blind adoration, where reason is suspended and the heart worships in unreasoning blessedness. It can only exclaim, holy, 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 while scarcely knowing what it means. <laughs> If this should all seem too mystical and too unreal, we offer no proof. <laughs> but some will read and recognize the description of the sunlit peaks where they have been for at least brief periods and to which they often long to return. And such will need no proof. Tozer, in writing that, I think hints at the reality of what your experience could be in loving God what your participation in learning about God can become if you want to know him that way. You don't have to, of course, and there's no rule that says you should, but you know, sometimes when you run into perfect love, you can't help but want more and to come in even farther than you were before.